Hey, this is Lee. I want to do a video by request about divorce and remarriage. There is no way I can do this video without it breaking my heart. And I know that if you're looking at this video, your heart's broken now. And I, I, I feel it. I understand it, man. I mean, I, I got it. So the question is, can a person divorce? There are a couple of exclusions or a couple of laws or word in the Bible that says you can. For fornication, unfaithfulness, uh, a person can be divorced. No question. I mean, that's just there. And you, can, you can't do anything with that. Jesus talked about it. Um, but what he said was that uh, Moses gave you a writing of divorcement because of the hardness of their hearts. It was never God's plan that people divorce ever. Ever. When you make a vow, you're supposed to stick with that vow no matter what. But unfortunately, life isn't that simple. So God allowed Moses to put that out there. You notice that if God didn't want it to happen, he'd have told him, no, Moses, absolutely not. Not doing it? No way. But there were some exclusions where people had to be protected. And fornication, unfaithfulness, ungodliness was part of that law or rule so Moses did give him a writing of divorcement and today with social media internet <clears throat> excuse me all these things make more opportunities for fornication and unfaithfulness than ever before I mean there are so many porn sites out there and if you look on a woman to lust Jesus said you've committed adultery already in your heart and I've said in many a revival service, many churches, uh, on, and, and watch pastors, a woman get up in a skirt and a, a pastor would sit and go, now you know what he's doing, he's, he's lusting. <laughs> so, first of all, let me say this, that uh, I have yet to meet in my lifetime ever a person that has not looked on a woman or a man to lust at some point in their life. It happens to everybody. Jesus put it in there to show you that everybody is a fornicator because nobody is so strong that they do, they haven't lusted. And I'm talking about after salvation, after you got born again. Satan will put those things in front of you and you can try to, to be holier than everybody else say, that never happened to me. You lie like a rug. It happens to everyone. So there literally is no person living right now that hasn't lusted in their heart or looked at somebody and said, hmm. Because that's what Satan does. He try, he tempts us with those things. Okay, that being said. So literally every person being that, there's no innocent in the fornication at all. So what happens when one person commits fornication? I mean, do you can you put them away? Absolutely. You can do that. The Bible says you can. But should you? No. The Bible continually talks about reconciliation. Reconcile 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 do not get divorced don't do it because if you do somewhere you're going to you're going to break the law you're going to have, have god's going to be displeased with you there's no way around that so let me say divorce is sin but in cases of abuse child abuse uh uh drug addiction uh, sexual immorality, when we're talking about bestiality, uh, fornication, porn, uh, whatever it may be, those are reasons for divorce and you have a right to do it. And that's just the law. But here's the thing. There's no way a person, man or woman, will ever divorce somebody and walk away without having a thorn in their heart for all time. As long as you live, you will be broken. And you're not going to be able to overcome it and this is going to stay with you all the days of your life. Can you remarry? That's not for me to say or anybody else. You have to decide that for yourself. And the way that you decide that for yourself is to pray. And I mean fast and pray. But you have to have forgiveness. And you got to be forgiven of divorce and fornication and arguing and fighting and raising your voice and blah 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 all the stuff that comes with it can you be forgiven after you somebody's divorced and there's no way to reconcile can you be forgiven yes 
But after you're forgiven, you need to, if God leads you to with, to be with someone, I'm stumbling because it's making me nervous. And because I don't know how that's going to work for you. I don't. That's between you and God. You need to let God lead you in what you do. Because without his leadership, without his guidance, you're going to fail again. And then you're going to get it. You're going to get in a, a pattern of married, divorce, married, divorce, married, divorce, married, divorce. And people don't really understand this until way down the road. And they've been married five, six, seven, eight times. And they don't know how it all happened. And it's so confusing that many times people just can't find forgiveness because they, it's all confusing. So if you divorce, let it be biblically. And then you need to be away from everyone dating wise for three to five years. I know that sounds tough. And I say this because you need three to five years to find forgiveness for you, your complicity. What you did in the marriage to ruin it. Because it ain't just them. Because if you're thinking that, then you're you're already off track. But you got to find forgiveness for yourself. And then you have to wait and let God decide for you. It's biblical to be alone. And it's biblical to be married. But whether you're alone or whether you're married, it still has to be led by God. And you don't get to make that decision. If you are a Christian and you want to be one and you want to go to heaven, then you have to be led by the Spirit in everything you do. Marriage is important. Remember, it's a vow for life. And if that vow gets broken, there's a lot of consequences that come with it. And the sad part is the children. Because when you break up, in your marriage, you are going to scar the ch children. And there's no conceivable possible way for you to heal that scar. It's going to be in them. They're from a broken home now. Uh, a step-parent comes along and they can do a lot of healing. They can help a lot of things. But they're never going to completely be able to, to be that person. And it's, it's going to be hard. So don't divorce unless absolutely, absolutely at the end of everything. Now, I love you with all my heart, and I'm telling you to reconcile. And I'm not telling you to divorce. I'm not telling you to remarry. Absolutely not. You have got to go to God, and you and God work that out for yourself. But know this. There's a danger sign here, and there is a non there is a uh, damage. There's going to be damage to you, to kids, to him or her. And that damage will be there for the rest of their lives. So think about this. Pray about this. Fast. Stop eating. Fasting. Pray about it. To go to God. Reconcile. Reconcile. Because the damage will be devastating to everyone around you, and including the church. Whatever church you go to, it's going to devastate them too. Will they all go on? Absolutely. Unfortunately, there are churches out there and pastors out there and people out there that if you get divorced, mm -hmm. you're never going to fit in with these people again. It's not going to happen. You are going to be on the outs because of bigotry, because people don't understand everything and they can't. They don't know all the every aspect of your divorce or your married life so my advice is if your church can't work with you to heal then you need to move to another church explain to the pastor that you went through a divorce let him know everything up front and begin again can a person be divorced and go on to have to do something in the church absolutely I mean, they kick pastors out because they had a divorce and they couldn't do anything to stop it. They have pastors, deacons, teachers that had to go through this devastating thing. Does that make them non-qualified for the rest of their life to not be in those things? Absolutely not. That's just a bunch of hypocrites that don't realize that we all sin and come short of the glory of God. Listen, there, the Bible said there's none righteous. No, not one. None of us are. And we're all going to have these human experiences and these human failures and successes. But we need to do it together. Suffer together. 
work together, celebrate together, find reconciliation. Even when a person's been divorced, we got to find a way to put them back together again. Both if we can, but if we can't and there's just one, then we need to work on putting that person back together again. Helping them find forgiveness with God and then see where God takes them and stay out of their business. I love you with all my heart. This is my video. Reconcile, reconcile, reconcile. But if you can't, go to God because the damage is devastating to everyone involved. I love you. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Remember, I did not say divorce anyone. I did not say remarry someone. I never gave none of those permissions. I'm telling you to don't get divorced and reconcile. I really feel strong to say that. I love you with all my heart. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Stop back often. I'm slowing down a little bit, but I'm, I'm catching back up and I'll be doing more videos soon. I love you. Bye.